Hello, my lovely cat mojo tears. It is your cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy, here with you. How's it going? I don't know, you can't answer me. Well, speaking of questions and answers, me asking that question, how you doing? You can't answer me. You can ask me questions and I will answer them. Miracle of miracles, technology at its finest. That's why we're here today, not only to answer a question, but maybe to give you something that you can work with in your home. So, henceforth, to wit and all that, Let's listen to Elizabeth. Hi, Jackson. Uh, this is Elizabeth from Switzerland. I have a question for you uh, regarding my uh, my cats. I have two adult cats, Cleo and Galaxy, and two kittens who are four and a half and three and a half months now. We are having major construction work that's going to be happening in our building and in my apartment. And so my question is, can I do something to make Cleo and Galaxy feel more comfortable about the noise that's going to happen. Like we're talking like major, major construction work. Can I do something to help them feel more comfortable with the fact that there's going to be lots of noise and lots of people in and out of the apartment? And can I do anything to ensure that um, because they do go out, that they do come back if they get scared with anything that's happening? Anyway, thanks a lot and bye. So Elizabeth, we're not just talking about just Cleo and Galaxy here, which, you know, you got a cat named Galaxy. That's pretty cool. Anyhow, Cleo and Galaxy Boshu, 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 and Bagheera. They are all going to have to deal with what you're saying is sort of cataclysmic construction. So that's a tall order, and I'm really glad you asked me. To answer this, I will, as I tend to do at this point, because we've talked about things a lot over the years, right up here is a video about the wonders of base camp. Establishing a base camp, and in the video there, I talk about establishing base camp as the thing to do when you're either first adopting a cat, first fostering cats, or moving to a new place, because your cats get to have all the things in one room that represent security, that represent love and affection. We're not just talking about food bowls and water bowls, obviously, and, and, and litter boxes, but also things like, if you take a look at this right there, those are three of your four cats playing on this really nice blanket or bedspread or whatever that is on the ground. That thing, that becomes what we call, you know, an epic scent soaker, where the cats get all of their group scent on something so that then they can identify it as being a part of home. So if you were to move to a new house, Elizabeth, things like that blanket are key to base camp, along with, I saw in the back of your shop there, we saw a cat tree. Cat trees are a very important part of the territory. Things that smell like you as well. Little cat beds. You know where I'm going with all this, right? But that's where I would go for your cats with this construction. I don't know how long it's gonna be going on for, but if it's gonna be really intense and your cats are, like you said, skittish with people, then it's the best thing to do. Let them retreat. You know, I'm all about challenge lines and getting your cats to be the best version of themselves that they can possibly be. Not in this case. In this case, it's okay to be in your base camp and to have the comfort of one another and the things that, that retain the group scent and Elizabeth Yu going in there and hanging out with them just to sort of retain some sense of normalcy. And then at the end of the day, when all the workers leave, uh, open up the base camp and they go back to their home. The other great thing about having that, that sort of construction base camp, Elizabeth, is that who knows what that construction is gonna do. There's no way they're gonna walk into your apartment and in one day, ba-bang, it's all done. Like time lapse construction, your place is gonna look kind of torn apart for a little bit, right? So it could be that the living room is where things get the most affected or your bedroom. As long as you have a room that can be base camp for these guys, there are some days where you might not even be able to open up the door because there's too much exposed drywall or places for your cats to get out. So it's okay to go into sort of a, a lockdown, as it were, just for the sake of everybody's comfort, sanity, and, and confidence. You know, don't forget, construction workers come into your house. They bring in smells into your house that you can do nothing about. They're gonna be wearing their work boots, they're gonna be wearing jeans, and if they have animals at home, it's gonna smell like them. Your place is gonna start uh, having its group scent compromised, and that is a really important facet of a, of a cat's life, especially when there's multiple cats in the home. So again, I think this, this construction base camp is the thing to do, and make it an opportunity to get even more things to retain the group scent, so that when the construction is over, and this is key, 
see when the construction is over, you can then explode out that construction base camp, cover up the things that were just, you know, changed in their territory and the things that were uh, holding negative uh, connotations and negative scent before and replace it with some heavenly goodness. And that's really how Basecamp can not only work for you in times of crisis or in times of, of sort of a lockdown or whatever it is, but afterwards it helps them to regain their sense of mojo and build it as well. Well, that's it, Elizabeth. I hope it goes smoothly. I hope everything construction-wise is not as cataclysmic as I said it was gonna be. But in the meantime, this base camp will help your cats and help grow their mojo in the long run. But you guys seem awfully mojo-fied to begin with, so that's all thanks to you, their loving parent. All right, all you loving parents, if you've got a question, you know where to send it. You don't know where to send it? Right here, right there. Upload you asking that question, and then, of course, give me a video of your cats. If they're doing the behavior in question, that would be great. Otherwise, just fun stuff like what Elizabeth sent, and I'll deal with that. And you never know, maybe I'll answer it. All right, you guys, until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you.